What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about typical ownership costs associated with the Lexus ISF. Just a quick recap, if you are new to the channel, I do have a uh, 2012 Lexus ISF with 74,740 miles on it right now. I've owned the car for a little over three years and bought it with 50,000 and 800 and some odd change miles on it. So I'm going to try and keep the content of this video to normal use for normal people that just use this car as a daily driver, maybe takes it into the canyons on the weekends, stuff like that. I'm not going to go into, you know, those of us that track the car and, uh, you know, use it more, uh, more aggressively than the average driver does just because that would, you know, exaggerate the, the cost of ownership. So let's talk about tires first. Now, as many of you know, I run the Firestone Firehawk Indy 500s in 255 front and 285s in the rear. And I went and actually checked on TireRack.com last night to see how much 255, 275s are because I'm comparing them against the price of the Michelin Pilot 4Ss, which are the kind of gold standard for a road tire that most people, um, you know, look at. So right now, or Last night when I looked, the Indy 500s in 255, 275s cost $657 for a full set. And the PS4Ss cost $1,161. And if you're wondering why I chose the 255, 275 setup for the comparison, it's only because the PS4Ss don't come in 285, 3019s like the Indy 500s do. If you want to keep the original factory size, the 225s in front and 255s in back, which I would highly advise against doing. You could get Indy 500s for $485 and the PS4Ss are $1,075 for that uh, for that size. So you have a quite a range, 485 to about $1,161 that you can spend on typical tires for your ISF, depending on what size you want. And for anybody that hasn't seen my review on the Indy 500s, I've used them on the street, on track, drag racing. So I'm going to link the review that I have on those tires down below. And I've really, really enjoyed them. Next up, let's talk about the rotors and the pads. If you want to get OEM rotors for your Lexus ISF, you're going to pay about $90 to $100 per rotor. Uh, I see the, see them on eBay there, so they're pretty good uh, pretty good deal for those. A full set you can you know get them for about three hundred sixty uh, dollars or so, maybe you know a little bit more, but all the way up to you can spend a lot of money on the two piece rotors, a full set you know two thousand or just even a little bit more than that. Let's talk about brake pads. I have seen some uh, some brake pads that are so cheap for this car. Um, I, some people use them. I think they're the Duralast Gold. Um, I have no personal experience with them, but they've got them for like a hundred dollars for the full set, front and back, which is you know crazy uh, crazy cheap. But I personally have not gone with them. I have the Project Mew ones for my street setup. It cost me three hundred dollars for all four. And for my track setup, it was about $400 for all four uh, sides for um, for brake pads. You can go up, uh, you know, a little bit higher to, you know, $700 for all four. There's even, you know, some of the more expensive ones that go up to $1,600 or so. But I think most people are spending between $100 and $400 for brake pads. Just depends on what you're going to use them for and what kind of performance you want out of them. Next up, insurance. You're obviously gonna need insurance for your car, no matter what you have. But for the Lexus ISF, I've seen people pay about $75 a month, all the way up to some people paying 250 or 300 a month from what I've seen online, which I personally think is outrageous, but that all, you know, insurance kind of depends on the individual and the company, a lot of different factors in getting insurance. I personally have full coverage on my car and I have a clean driving record, no tickets, uh, no accidents or anything. So I, uh, I I pay roughly about $100 a month or so for my insurance. Next up in lovely California, you have this sticker right here, your registration. It's that lovely yellow sticker that I showed you. That is the registration here in California. And they like to bend you over every single year to the tune of 
my last payment uh, earlier this year was $417 for registration. So um, if you are watching from out of state, you're probably thinking that's unbelievable because I've heard of a lot of people that pay, I don't know, 50 bucks for registration. But uh, that's just California for you. Uh, you know, you can't do anything to get around that if you live here uh, other than registering your car out of state or doing something like that. Next up, let's talk about maintenance. So next cost that most people have with their car and you'll have with this one too is an oil change. I have asked and called the dealers and asked them how much they charge for a typical oil change for this car and they charge the ones that I've called about $180 or so. Um, I personally can do or you know change my oil, uh, own oil. It's pretty simple. So it's just two five quart jugs of Mobile One Synthetic which are about $25 a piece um, at Walmart. And then I get the uh, Toyota filter from uh, Toyota. I think that's seven or eight dollars a piece. So you can easily get, get away with changing your own oil for sixty dollars or you can have somebody else do it. So regarding maintenance, I find maintenance to be rather cheap on this car. There's nothing extraordinary that you have to do to this car um, that you wouldn't have to do to any other car really. Um, you know, checking fluids, changing your oil, you know, things like that, you know, check, making sure your tires are okay. It's really not that bad. You, you, you do have the, the big services, you know, like the 60K service, which can be expensive if you get it done at the dealership uh, because it includes the spark plugs and the differential fluid uh, change. But, you know, the, the, the normal 5K service really isn't too bad. Um, I believe most dealerships charge, uh, the, the few that I've called around here for the, the, those normal services, around 220 or 230 or so if you want to do, do it through them. Um, I, I'll actually show you the, the, the owner's, uh, what's it called, the owner's uh, warranty and service guide book right here. I'm going to show you the pages, and I'll show you what most of these, you know, five five k services consist of and when you, when you see it you're going to wonder you know it's, it's really not that much that you have to do so let me switch this camera around and i'll show you so like i told you about the 60k service it was these services in addition to the um, spark plugs and differential fluid change but i mean like look 65k service change your oil inspect brakes rotate tires which you can't do um because it's, they're staggered. Check floor mats, road test vehicle. These are if you're on your dirt roads. Inspect actual, I mean, this is just easy stuff that most people can do themselves. 70K, oil and filter. Rotate tires, measures thickness of brakes and rotors. Replace smart key battery. I mean, that, you can do that for a couple bucks. Um, you're just visually inspecting things. Here's the uh, 75K service. Replace oil. Rotate tires, which you can't do. Clean air condition filter, which is a three minute job. If you even, I'd rather just replace it. Um, that's gonna cost you less than 10 bucks to replace that filter. Um, visually inspect, check for floor mats, uh, road test vehicle, inspect the following. You know, these are, it's not, what's this, you know, 80,000, same thing. It's pretty much just change the oil and inspect things. You have it there straight from the book. I mean, the inspection or the the maintenance on this car is not very much. It's pretty much oil changes and checking to make sure nothing is wrong. Uh, I, I know everybody's level of mechanical savviness is different. I, I am by no means uh, an expert, but I, most of the thing, these things I think I can do. Now, I have not had any issues with my car in regards to uh, the normal failure points that people would uh, you know like to tell you about. Um, main one being the valley plate leak that a lot of isfs uh, have gotten that can be i've seen people gotten you know received quotes from lexus you know it's a twelve hundred dollar job or so um you know that'd be an unwelcomed event if that does uh happen so hopefully it doesn't i'll knock on some wood um the water pump going out that that's happened people having radiator leaks uh you know there are there are good um there are good videos on YouTube, though, of, you know, people uh, showing how to change those out. So if you want to save a few bucks, you can uh, definitely try and tackle it yourself. But, you know, it'll cost probably a couple uh, couple hundred dollars to take care of those items if you do take it to the dealership, if not a little bit more. Next up, the cost of the fun stuff you put in here. So gas costs for this car. 
It is a little bit more because it is a five liter V8 performance engine. You are probably not going to just be driving around, you know, easy all the time. So the um, rating on the sticker is a 16, uh, you know, city driving 23 on the highway, uh, which is about average if you're not, you know, getting on it too much. I have seen anywhere from five miles per gallon when I'm on track all the way up to 20. 7 28 miles per gallon if i just got it on cruise control just cruising down the freeway and uh you know not really getting on it just on, on a long drive so you will see that variation in there but i think that it's pretty close to what the what those ratings are on the um on the sticker you know 16 23. now you are going to have to buy premium gas here in california we only have 91 uh, we don't have 93 like other states and of course if you've seen gas prices lately you know this video is being filmed in May 2019 for those people watching it in the future. But here in California, we are getting bent over again. Uh, the cheapest place here in my town, uh, it's a Shell station, I think it's $4.16 a gallon right now. You're gonna have a little bit more cost there because it does require the premium fuel, but that's just part of the game when you have a performance vehicle. And um, if you live in another state, I'm sure the gas is much cheaper than it is here. I personally think this car has been pretty cheap to own. Other than the typical maintenance, there's no, you know, real costs that are out of, you know, the, the realm of normal, I believe, to, uh, to, to own this car. So that about wraps it up for most of the maintenance costs uh, that you typically have with a Lexus ISF. I hope you uh, learned something from this video and you, you know, maybe quelch some fears that you may have had that the ISF may be a, an expensive car to own. Um, so if you have any more questions on typical ownership costs of the Lexus ISF, put them down in the comments section below. And thank you again for everybody for watching the video. I'll uh, link a few more here around uh, surrounding my head so you can watch uh, some other uh, fun stuff that I have on my channel. So thanks again for watching and we'll talk to you on the next one.